Welcome back. Dementia is a huge topic in its own right, and the focus of the video this week, we're going to run through what you need to know for your AKT exam. First things first, dementia is common and affects about 700,000 people in the UK at the moment, and as our population is getting older, this number will only increase. The most common cause by far is Alzheimer's disease, with vascular dementia and Lewy body dementia the second and third most common. Beyond the clinical features, which we will discuss, Poor dementia care in a holistic sense has a tremendous impact on not only the patient's life, but carers and loved ones, as well as an ever-increasing amount of governance and spending dedicated to dementia care. Diagnosis is often delayed, not only because of the presentation can be vague and non-specific, but also because of the stigma behind it. History from the family and loved ones, as well as the patient if possible, is invaluable with specific questioning over cognitive symptoms, as well as some of the behavioural and psychological symptoms of dementia, or BPSD, and the impact upon daily activities of living. Cognitive symptoms include memory impairment, dysphasia, disorientation, and impairment of executive functions, such as planning, whereas BPSD symptoms are often fluctuating but can last for a number of months, which include psychotic symptoms, agitation, anxiety, mood disturbance, and a loss of sleep cycle. NICE recommend cognition to be assessed formally by an assessment tool, with some examples being the 10-point cognitive screener and 6-item screener, with subsequent testing such as the MMSE taken in secondary care. We also need to exclude differentials such as thyroid disorders or delirium and mood disorders, and thus screening bloods including a full blood count, user knees, liver function tests, thyroid function, bone profile, vitamin B12 and folate are often used, with neuroimaging including either CT or MRI brains ruling out any structural causes. As mentioned, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Pathologically, there is evidence of cerebral atrophy, particularly in the hippocampus as well as plaque deposition via beta amyloid protein and tau proteins microscopically, with a deficit of acetylcholine transmitters throughout the brain. Management of Alzheimer's is relatively holistic, with NICE promoting the use of well-being and cognitive stimulation strategies where appropriate. Pharmacological therapy is supported by NICE, involves the use of anticholinesterase inhibitors in the form of denepazil, galantamine and rivastigmine. These are often first line in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, with some of the side effects of particularly denepazil being bradyarrhythmia and insomnia. Second line treatment is through memantine, an NMDA receptor antagonist, and is particularly useful in moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease. Vascular dementia is often seen in those with significant cardiovascular disease, with often subcortical ischemic damage being responsible for many of the symptoms where the patient may present in a stepwise fashion, which represents separate insults, and may have gait or inattention problems, as well as focal neurological signs. Lewy body dementia accounts for about 20% of cases, with the presence of Lewy bodies in the basal ganglia, or more specifically, the substantia nigra, paralimbic and neocortical areas, with a crossover with Parkinson's disease seen in many patients. These patients often have a progressive cognitive impairment with symptoms of Parkinsonism, such as bradykinesia and rigidity, as well as distinct visual hallucinations. Diagnosis is supported via SPECT-CT scanning or also known as DAT scanning, to help visualise the basal ganglia, with management revolving around acetylcholine inhibitors and memantine. The key piece of clinical information here is that patients with Lewy body dementia deteriorate rapidly with neuroleptics or antipsychotics, and may result in irreversible Parkinsonian symptoms. Frontotemporal lobar degeneration, or FTLD, is another subset of dementia, albeit relatively rare in comparison. It will probably come up more in your exams than your career as a whole, but it's often seen in the younger population, typically younger than 65, with significant personality and conduct issues, but preserved memory. There are three distinct subtypes of FTLD, with the most common being PICS disease, with significant personality changes and disinhibition, as well as a change in appetite. Pathologically, there will be significant atrophy of the frontal and temporal lobes and deposition of PIC bodies microscopically. NICE, however, do not recommend any acetylcholinesterase inhibitors for these conditions. Chronic progressive aphasia is another subset, with patients often presenting with non-fluent agrammatic speech. And the third subset is semantic dementia, which often presents as fluent but progressive aphasia, with speech having little context or meaning. 
An important topic to cover in all patients with dementia is advanced care planning. Given that we have no cure currently, and thus having discussions with the patient and family as well as being familiar with legal frameworks is important. See the video on legal frameworks for more information, but it's important to plan ahead with advanced care and decisions with consideration of lasting power of attorney if necessary, and as well as providing personalised care, including discussions about resuscitation and palliative care if appropriate. So, I hope that helps. Dementia is a horrible condition and a minefield to navigate. I hope that this gives you an overview of what to consider for your patients in your career, but also as a rough baseline for your AKT exam. Head over to our Instagram page with the link below. We've got a ton of revision material there. Also, our Facebook page has ongoing discussions about the AKT, so go over and check it out. But if you've liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.